Happy Wisdom Wednesday, people. Fresh out the gym. My energy levels are really high right now, so I felt like instead of waiting until the evening, when it's not business time, I'll try it. And if I miss a phone call, if I miss a text message, I'll get back to that later. So again, happy Wisdom Wednesday. And before we start, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I always feel weird saying that. It feels like I'm begging. I, as a YouTube subscriber, automatically do that for people. I automatically like videos when I first start, if I subscribe to the person. But I guess that's not a regular thing. I don't know. I, I Like looking at social media, I noticed that people view more than they interact with posts. The only time that they give energy to posts is if it's a celebrity who's never going to acknowledge them. I think it's kind of like a mindset of people liking or wanting things that they can't attain or that's hard to attain or that's far away from them. But anyways, it's all right, but it's appreciated for everyone who does do that and everyone who does acknowledge everything and everyone who does interact in the comment section because that is where you discuss the video. So anyways, Wisdom Wednesday. For me, every category I've been doing, mine is traveling. I could probably make 20 plus videos off the top of my head. Friendship, um, finding peace, mindset, family relationships, relationship relationships, navigating through life, mental health, story times, all of that. I could make a bunch of them. So for me, I'll just try to take it one video at a time and stay focused because I, I, I love a good rant. So for this video, we're going to stay focused on basically discussing the mindset and setting goals and self-awareness, starting with self-awareness. In my experience and in my belief, self-awareness or lack thereof plays a big part in so many things. With a lack of self-awareness, you don't have full knowledge of how you impact others with your actions. You don't have a full knowledge on why certain things don't work out for you, why certain things turned out bad for you, et cetera, et cetera. Self-awareness is not something that you just put in the microwave and then you're going to hear it finished in two minutes. It's something that takes time and it takes also, in my opinion, somewhat a little bit of isolation as much as much as you can get and also a lot of reflecting reflecting on how things make you feel reflecting on maybe what your triggers are reflecting on different situations that turned out great reflecting on them same situations later turning out bad reflecting on a lot of things and i noticed too with lack of self-awareness a lot of people be setting goals that's unrealistic to their capabilities they can achieve it but based off of the way they're maneuvering at that given time, they won't achieve it. Like if somebody wants to save a thousand dollars, that's their goal. And they tell it to social media, they tell it to their family members, they tell it to their homegirls, they tell it to whoever, which honestly certain goals you should keep to yourself. But anyways, nevertheless, they don't have the self-awareness to say to themselves, okay, self, I make 4,000 a month. And I want to save a thousand by the end of the year, which is, is very a doable goal, but they never count how much they spend. They never make a budget plan. They never come to the realization that they have a shopping addiction. They never come to the realization that they overspend on unnecessary things that have no value and end up probably saving $300 and then turn around and needing that same $300 again because their spending got the best of them or when it comes to, I really ain't gonna really play with weight too much because I know that's a sensitive topic for a lot of people, but I, I do, do I, I could say something about that, but I'm gonna leave that alone because this is the internet and I know y'all don't really play and you know, ain't no telling how long this video gonna be around. So also with just like wanting better in your life, like people who I know probably don't like their neighborhood, but their self-awareness is lacking of informing them that they don't manage their time. And that's another thing, time management too, because they could be using time looking at different neighborhoods, looking up different realtors, looking up different things, but they're they spending more time either complaining about the issue to other people or they just wasting aimless time on social media. 
Like with social media, honestly, it's like I have a love hate for it because a lot of good can come from it. But if it ain't handled properly and if you ain't really um, like using it the right way, it could definitely be a big waste of your time. It's kind of like food, like with food, as far as with dental work, with candy, you can eat candy and some candy may even have vitamins in it, but too much of any candy is going to lead to cavities. And cavities sometimes come from, especially from not flossing right, from not brushing correctly, from using the wrong type of uh, toothbrush, just all of that. That's what social media is. Social media rots your brain like a cavity if you don't use it right, if you over consume it too much. So many people I see spend their whole day on social media and then get nothing important done. Like their assignment might only took 30 minutes for them to do, which felt like it, it, it felt forever, but then they gave social media five hours like that. So self-awareness, that's self-awareness as well. And then also it's like in a lot of instances, people be in denial about who they are. And with self-awareness, you will have a better sense of that because it's all too often I see people despising and making negative comments about other people, but y'all literally are twins. Your life is twins. I see people judging different people for the kids they have or for their relationship status or for their way of communicating with people or for how they dress or just different things or what airline they use. And the person doing all of that does the same exact thing. So either that's self-awareness or you just full-blown delusional. I don't know. But with self-awareness, at least you would kind of humble yourself a little bit more. Or even if you didn't do any of those things, you would have a humbleness to understand that people are going to live their life based off of their experiences and what their knowledge is and, and how they respond to the environment. Because you can have five people, shout out to my household, five people grow up in the same house and have completely different personalities. So with self-awareness, I think... Once you get enough of that, it'll kind of take away the being judgmental to other people and also to holding yourself more to the fire. And with self-awareness, it helps relationships better as far as friendship, family dynamics, and relationships because with your self-awareness, you are able to identify whether or not something is not healthy for you to deal with at all. Because I know for me, when I didn't have standards, when I was overly non-judgmental, like I didn't want to judge anyone, even situations where I should have looked at the person and saw that they were a spade or a draw four and called them a spade or a draw four and then left it at that. I refused to do that out of the effect of not wanting to be non-judgmental. And once I started having self-awareness and standards, I started being uncomfortable around certain people because there's certain behaviors that I know are triggering to me or back to self-awareness and connecting it to goals, I know that some of my goals being around certain environments or people are, are going to actually rewind my process. So and with self-awareness, I know that, and experience, I know that no matter how much I've given to people, that at any given time, a person could really just be done with you. It could be something you did or you don't have to have done anything. Or it could be something that you didn't do, something that they expected from you and things of that sort. It's so easy to, to to really just go into a rant with this stuff because it's all connected. It's like a big bowl of gumbo or something like that. And with my self-awareness, and especially now, like I think I'm the most aware I've been my whole life. Well, not really. I think I'm the most aware I've been for this section of my life, which is adulthood, which is almost peak adulthood, I guess, in a few decades or something like that. But I know, I know that with me... Self-awareness helps me because when I'm running low on energy, I know to pull back. And people around me, I've already set that boundary that, hey, when I'm recharging, communication is gonna look like this. But also, I need, with, with people, they have to understand, they don't, if they don't have self-awareness, they don't realize how they communicate. They might be a slow texter, they might be a slow person who called back, they might be a dry texter, they might be someone who calls and holds the phone. So. If you don't have self-awareness and you're not realizing that those behaviors are pushing me away because I'm already running low on energy. I can have meaningful communication, even if I'm low on energy, but I just can't deal with the gossiping, the complaining, the argumentative natures, the aggressive behaviors and things like that. And my self-awareness allowed me to know that because younger me used to be dealing with all of this stuff and always wondering why I would feel sleepy when I just woke up.
wake up at seven, seven thirty. I'm sleepy. I need a nap or getting ready for work or getting ready to go somewhere in the morning and wondering why I'm lagging. Self-awareness helped me to understand how I respond to all of these different things. And it also made me set boundaries to coexist with the self-awareness, to match it, to give myself a standard of how my day is going to go. That's why my days are majority of the time peaceful. And anything that I see is, is leaning towards interrupting that, I take action based off of self-awareness, me knowing, okay, I know with me, I work well with conflict. When it comes around, I, I work well with just getting out of Dodge because there's no point in engaging in it because in these situations, it's not going to fix anything. Yes, you can you could prove your point. You can get the crown for shutting people down and all of this other stuff, but you really gain nothing in the end. It's literally all that for a drop of blood. All that for a drop of blood. It's like, it's not really worth it. And with self-awareness, with, with self-awareness and and setting goals and setting boundaries and things like that, that's, that's helped everything feel a little bit more peaceful for me. And ranting, ranting, ranting. <laughs> Anyways, um, but it also kind of changed the, it changed the game for me because some people want it all and I don't want nothing at all. I'm psyched, I'm playing. But uh, some people really, I, they just was never a good fit and it just makes sense. And that's why in certain situations, you kind of see when you get away from certain people, your life seems like the clouds just disappear and the sun is just shining directly on you. And then if you go back around them, the storm come again, leave, sunshine, come back, storm, back and forth. But those people, they, and that's another thing too. It's another and another and another, another one. Another one. Another one. Is that when you have self-awareness, it kind of makes you look at other people who lack it, like either with sympathy, disgust, or just uh, completely annoyed and just want to get away from them. Because you'll see based off of what they complain about or what they want and them just never moving out of the same place, just sitting in that same spot for years, you will see that they're holding their own self back. It's not an environmental thing. It don't be, you know, different tragedies like we always have. And it's literally them. And some people romanticize that by saying, I'm my own worst enemy. That is the worst thing you can do. Because once you believe that you're your own worst enemy, you will always self-sabotage yourself. And you will set goals, never achieve them. You think it's funny, you're telling it to other people. People probably get tired of you. Because one thing about people, they will get tired of you. You could do whatever, you could, you could give a lot, you could give a little, you can give nothing. People are going to be tired of you. People are always tired of other people. They just don't know how to say it to each other. But self-sabotaging is not a cute thing, and it'll hold you back as long as you don't realize that you need to become self-aware, set proper boundaries, match your standards to realistic things, and believe in yourself. Look at your flaws and look at your mishaps, but also look at it with acceptance and learn from it versus... And then also, too, I'm not really big on recommending this stuff to people on the Internet because I don't know y'all. But for me, I find that finding a suitable form of therapy, preferably a specialist, helps and works wonders for people. For me, I don't know about y'all, like I said. Um, so it's like that can actually change a lot because we find ourselves emotionally and mentally leaning on the people around us. And honestly, it's a dangerous game you're playing because you don't know until your friendship or family backstab you or relationship in that that person didn't care for you. So during these happier times or the times where people still wearing their mask or the time people still pretending, you are being vulnerable with situations that are close to your chest with people that may mishandle you. You may have people that minimize your feelings about stuff. You may have people that tell other people your business to where it's people you never met that know that other person, but they know all your business. And they know that the listener is tired of you. The listener is making fun of you. The listener is judging you. 
So that is something that people should consider. That's why for me, I before I actually started seeing real people, I really just would use internet tools as far as different therapy methods and things like that, or even looking up actual psychiatrists and psychologists online who post free material and who give you different free things. I used that first and then kind of took baby steps towards that situation. Like me now, I may share a few things with people from day to day, but I'm never actually like super, super, super vulnerable with people. And I'm minimal to complain. People, I, I complain so little that people really will take anything I say if it sounds like it might be bad and just become an investigator and want to know the full details. But it don't work like that for me because most of any issue I have, like Jeremiah issue, is Jeremiah issue. I don't mind people who I have that rapport with, if they're leaning on me, depending. And, but I'm not about to, I'm not about to do that. Because it's too many times in the past where I've said things in vulnerability only to get really just brushed off. It's been times where people who just love being, you know, being involved with mess and drama will reach out to me and ask me how I'm doing. And I may say like what the issue is that I'm currently facing, which I most likely have a game plan for it. And then people will brush that off and immediately start regurgitating whatever drama they seen online and just dismiss me. So that type of stuff, when I'm vulnerable, that really makes or breaks how I feel about people who handle me. And since I don't, I try not to destroy relationships. So I'm not really vulnerable with people. It's, it's better for the both of us or for all of us. Because even in my situation, there are people who I know in passing from years ago who maybe still keep in touch on social media, but it's like, some people, they overdo it, like to the point to where it feel like it's trauma dumping. And it's, and then I, it make you wonder how miserable are this, is this person? Because you can, everyone can have all these cute moments on social media and all these little videos and reels and filters and all this creativity stuff, beautiful stuff. I like to see it actually. But when you're communicating with them, it's always the bad. It's like, dang, you don't, you didn't have a frosty today from Chick-fil-A or you didn't find a dollar on the ground or the person at the gas station didn't pump your gas for you or you want a, a, something on a scratch off or you caught every green light on the way to wherever you were going. So all of those things go together. It's just for me, I have to do better at being more laser focused on making points but it's just, it feel like, it feel like I don't be having a lot of time. So I end up just getting everything in there at once. But it's actually only 17 minutes. I'm shocked. It felt like it was 30 minutes I've been talking, but that is really what I need people to understand. And I will watch this video back because I want to add like two little video clips to it, but I'll elaborate more. And depending on how the day goes, it's about to be 9 a.m. I'll probably make another video today. So y'all might see this shirt. Because at first I was going to wear black. Because I, I actually had on my my workout outfit was black today. And then my my post shower, my post workout shower outfit was black. But then I'm thinking, okay, this is the internet. Everything is psychological. Like wearing dark colors might scare people away or make the mood feel dark. So, you know, I'm wearing this tie-dye shirt, you know, to kind of give encouragement. And the bright side to self-awareness is that you, you once you really have self-awareness, do like mine is being delusional. Don't ever mistake being delusional with self-awareness. Because again, I definitely see people who you can tell they don't have self-awareness because especially combative people, they literally are combative, argumentative, pick at people, and will wonder why they don't have relationships or friendships, or even make statements about they too real for people, or all of these different weird things, but just being a viewer of their situations, is like, no, you're, you, you really jump out the window every time with people, you up here screenshotting stuff people post. You got more pictures in your phone 
of screenshots of other people's profiles than you have of your own kids of a, of, or your own self. You posting memes all day on social media, shading invisible people. And I, I find a lot of combative people be having some crazy follower ratios on social media too. They'll be have they'll be following 10,000 people and only have 50 followers. Pictures only begin two and three likes, but they up here posting memes all day. They might have over 20,000 social media posts within a small frame of time. Like those people, I, I'm not a medical professional, so I don't really, you know, I don't play with them words no more. Younger me and just where I came from, we be throwing a lot of the words around to describe people, but me knowing the climate we're in now, I'm not playing with that. But those people are good candidates for something. I don't know what it is because again, I ain't a professional, but I noticed that, and they don't have self-awareness, but me having self-awareness, I can no longer be around those people. It's even gross to see them in action because I went through all of this work, working on myself. It's kind of like when you, if you, if you someone who was in school, grade school, or maybe even college, I can only speak for grade school because college is actually super easy for me. But in grade school, studying, learning new different things, you may sacrifice playing the PlayStation or <laughs> Super Nintendo for studying for school. You, you, you put all your work in, you go to class, you get an A. You have the people in your class who never studied, hung out all night, did whatever they wanted, get to go to the mall on weekends, have trips for the summertime. They probably either made anywhere from a C all the way down to an F. But you did all of this work. Meanwhile, this person who barely puts in any work, y'all still in the same environments with each other? Like, or a better example is same thing with you studying you did all of that only for somebody to try to cheat off of you. So I did all of this work to get to this point and I got to the point, I deserve that point, I deserve that 100 I have. But you, somebody who living your best life, which ain't really best life, but you living your best life, but you ain't put no work in, but you gonna eat off of the, the A that I made that I worked for. I feel like that's similar to people who don't have self-awareness versus people who do. And I also feel like that's, that can be connected to the money situation that I'm always talking about, about how people can look at you and whatever money you have and feel like you owe that to them, but you worked for that. Like you really worked and you sacrificed. You probably missed your favorite artist concert. You probably was eating ramen noodles for a month straight just to get to that, that amount of money or just to pay that debt down and things like that. Meanwhile, this person, they blow everything they get, but they got every designer. They eating at every nice restaurant. They got all of the, they on the explore page on Instagram at every little hot spot in the city, but they expect you to give them your hard earned money. And it's the same thing with self-awareness because I find a lot of self-aware people have a little bit more peace than other people. So you have your peace being self-aware and you're supposed to sacrifice that dealing with people who ain't self-aware just to give them company, just to coddle them, just to, so they could tell you about another person they didn't fell out with. And then you can sit up here and try to convince them that they're a good person or tell them that it's gonna be okay or all of these other different things. That's one of the benefits of being an introvert because generally you able to be most selective of the people who are around you. And I would imagine that people should be more understanding because, hey, that's an introvert. I'm not expecting too much from him. I'm not expecting him to show up to things that's outside. I'm not expecting him to let me come over or he come over by me, or I'm not expecting him to always answer the phone. Mine is my weird family. Cause I, I really, I, I'm trying not to be like peach with the family stuff, but mine is them weirdos with, with the, the constant phone calls, the constant text messages, even with me setting the boundary of being an introvert and needing mental recharges regularly. It's like, I don't really have that issue with anybody I know. Most of my friends, my true friends, my true loved ones, the true people in my life, we have a very great dynamic with how much we communicate with each other. And even though, you know, some people, <laughs> cause I'm gonna be honest though here, I'm just not gonna tell all my business, but I'm gonna be honest when I do speak. Some people, I can't, like, no matter how much I love them, they, they tone deaf. Because it's like, you'll be talking about certain things with them, and then they'll, they'll just get to either over-suggesting or being overly judgmental and things like that. So all of those different things support 
the self-awareness, knowing triggers, introvert, setting goals and all of that, because at least with me being self-aware, I'm already aware, okay, this person does this. And when they do that, I feel like this. So I kind of navigate around that because overall we got a 90% positivity with this person. So that little 10% ain't going to be worth making an issue with them. I can still appreciate the 90%, but I just know, okay, or I know not to text this person because they send seven, eight messages at a time, which is so annoying because I would rather you have a paragraph text message than to just ding, 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 ding. Like that, I don't know. That'd be making me think people is a little loopy because I, I really, I've, I've never really asked a person who do that, why they do that. Because I I used to be a person that liked to see other people's side, but now I really don't care about the other side. If it's if it's messing with me, I ain't messing with it. Because for too long I've been to a convenience store or 7 Eleven for people. So I feel like if I don't like something, then it then I need to go with my move. Cause you you will sit up here and put up with stuff people do. And one day, the one thing that they don't like you did, they gonna yell it to the world and they gonna turn on you. And all them free meals you gave them, all them rides you gave, all that money that ain't never got paid back, is in the trash. That's why, be stingy with your money, be stingy with your time, and try to address stuff with people, but don't argue with nobody about your respect, about your boundaries, about your time, about appreciating you, especially if you're an adult. This is more for grown-ups who have their own car to leave, who have their own place to isolate from people. I can't really speak for people who share spaces with people, who share vehicles, who etc. Which I really feel for y'all because I know how that feel. I, that's why for me, I don't like going to people's house because I've lived with people before as a child, you know, parent and as an adult, majority on my own, but through trial and error in life, needed to live with people and zero out of 10 will recommend because people will treat you any kind of way when you need them even though you beat and helped them for decades so that's pre-workout gone wrong y'all because <laughs> i'm gonna end the video now though i don't make no sense i think the people who get it will get it like if you understand and and know where i'm coming from it'll make sense but I, I may do another video later today. It should just be a story time, at least with that. You could just stick to it. So I'll end it here. And don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. I always feel dirty saying that. I'd rather just do the little clip and say that, say that at the end. But I mean, I feel like at some point y'all will. Y'all want consistency. I give y'all that. Even though my YouTube shorts get thousands of views. But I don't like YouTube shorts. I like long form content, but long form content don't like me. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, guys. Wednesday Wisdom. And this is me signing out, I think. Wait, I'm trying to see. Okay, yeah.